So, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great privilege uh, to host Dr. Vicki Arcady this morning. She's a platinum presidential and a chiropractor from California. And you may have heard her a few weeks ago. If not, um, I'll give you a little bit of her background. Dr. Vicki has been a licensed chiropractor for over 20 years. She had little idea when she decided to become a doctor of chiropractic that she would become one of the most decorated, revered, and groundbreaking practitioners in the world. Since starting her practice in 1984, the pioneering Dr. Vicki, as she is known to her patients, has dedicated her personal and professional life to bringing health and hope to a group that previously received little attention from the chiropractic community of pregnant women. Before Dr. Arcady, pregnant women were considered too delicate and too risky to be managed by chiropractors, although now they're considered commonplace. Arcady broke new ground with her first controversial and courageous studies of subsequent care. Arcady went on to co-author a book with the famed and beloved Dr. Lyndon Smith, who is known to millions of households as the baby doctor. Dr. Arcady was also the first doctor in medical history to publish studies regarding the utilization of glyconutritionals with genetically damaged children and those with cerebral palsy. Dr. Arcady has been known as the doctor of last resort because to her, no case is hopeless. Desperate women, mothers, and even other doctors search her out for assistance and insight with their most difficult cases. Her results in those cases were and are and continue to be astonishing. Today, Dr. Vicky's mission remains one of bringing health and hope to pregnant women and their young babies, educating nutrition, the building blocks of health. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great privilege to introduce Dr. Vicky Arcady. Welcome once again, Vicky. Oh, thank you. This is so fun. We're talking all over the world, literally, right now. We most certainly are. Yeah. And, um, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the last time we spoke, and Dr. Vicky, we, we wanted to do, you know, from conception to pediatrics, which uh, we managed only to get into birth in the first call. So we covered conception and, and antenatal care and um, care during labor and delivery. And we thought today we might focus on, you know, what, how can people use a natural post how, how important it is, and what can we do with our children and postnatal care with nutrition after the delivery. So um, possibly, Dr. Vicki, just there will be people on this call who don't know anything about your background or how you became introduced to Manatech. Maybe just give a little bit of that story for them to bring them up to speed. I'd be happy to, and welcome, everyone. Uh, and I'm glad you're on the call today because, uh, no, this is this is really um, something for me to share, which is um, my heart, and that's this very subject. And I, you know, I was a practicing chiropractor. I began about 25 years ago in practice, and about three years prior to that, when I was in school, I started chiropractic school after UCLA. I realized, you know, it, it was like a lightning bolt hit me that pregnant women had no respect, literally. I mean, once a woman was pregnant, she was put out, you know, people, not too many, not even medical doctors like to touch them too much, you know. they just like they're, they're almost too holy and too sacred to even touch, and everybody was afraid they were going to break and all that. Well, I had a practice uh, that was exclusively pregnancy, pediatrics, and uh, newborns, and my practice became known as the last resort practice because I was seeing this specialized group, and I hooked up with a midwife who delivered my first godson, and um, she recognized the value of what I was doing with nutrition and chiropractic. So I had a terrific practice. I had a full-time practice in my office. I had a part-time practice in her birth center, and then I was on call 24-7 for births and babies and moms and, and labor. And so I was, as you can tell, I was very busy. I had a really great family practice. I had one family, five generations coming to see me. I was very, very happy and very busy. And I was very satisfied with what I was doing. I was getting results, and I was very satisfied. I had used a lot of supplements, mostly supplementation, because, you know, as chiropractors, uh, you, you don't do drugs, medications, or surgery. So I was forced to use nutrition with pregnancy and pediatrics and nutrition that was non-toxic uh, at any level. I couldn't use anything that was toxic to a mother, to her fetus, or to the babies or children. So I was going along great and doing my thing and very, very, very busy when one of my staff who I hired to look 
over and oversee all the literature that came through the office for nutritional products and the different nutrients and things. She was hired to sort everything out for me so that I could look at everything and see what it was I wanted to add. Well, this, this is Jackie Baird, who's actually uh, my business partner in Manitech, and she was the one who introduced me to these nutrients. She gave me the bears, the, uh, which are now known as the nano bears. She gave me, in those days, it was called the phyto bears. This was 11 years ago. She gave me the phyto bears, and she said, you know, why don't, I think there's something here, why don't you check it out? And believe me, I took one look at it, and I didn't want anything to do with it because I just, I, you know, doctors, let me just tell you something about doctors. Doctors do not want to interrupt their momentum. They don't want to stop and have to look at something new for too long because they feel that it might interfere with the care they're giving to their patients. So it's really hard for a doctor to to become introduced to something brand new that they never heard of because they, they're afraid that they, they will take themselves away from what they're doing and what they're succeeding in doing. So I always say the best way to to approach doctors is to drip on them, give them little pieces of literature often to read and uh, look at so that they can get an idea slowly, you know, so they have time. So anyway, I looked at this information. I looked at the, the fact that there was a new science of glycobiology. I saw that these nutrients went into the cell and not into the gut. They went into the cell. They worked with the cell, RNA and DNA, and I thought, there is nothing that I have on the shelf that does this. And then I thought, how could I not be aware of, this is only 11 years ago now, I thought, how could I not know about phytochemicals? Where has this literature been? And that was the first time I was exposed to phytochemicals. I mean, I think you can ask anybody on the street now, and they'll say know what a phytochemical is, because it's out. But 11 years ago, this was the first time I heard about it, and it was through Manitech that I heard about phytochemicals. So that was the other thing that I realized. This company was, was cutting edge, <clears throat> involved with the latest and greatest nutrition that none of my suppliers, and I, I'm telling you, I had a lot of mail coming in from a lot of different nutritional companies, and nobody touched on these two things, and I, I realized that I had to get involved with it and use it on my patients. So it started. And you went on then to start to, you know, I remember you saying that experience of your practice before and after glycanutrients was like two different worlds. So you went on to experience quite incredible ch changes or improvements in the results you could get with some of your patients and you. Well, yes. And the best, the, the one thing that I wanted to do was try these nutrients on my most difficult patients. Every doctor, every practitioner out there has a handful of patients that in their practice that they're just struggling with. They just can't get them over the hump to optimal health. They just can't get them out of that, you know, over the plateau. It's just like they're in a plateau and we just can't get them over, over uh, and above and upward to uh, complete health. And uh, these were the patients that I first tried the nutrients with and uh, added them to the diet. And uh, it was phenomenal, the result. I mean, in every single case, we got a result. From the little three-year-old toddlers that I gave the bears to uh, that were, uh, you know, had residual flus. There was a terrible flu. I think it was due to the earthquake. Uh, we had a severe earthquake in Northridge in 1994, and we got involved in 1996. But the spores and everything were still in the atmosphere and still around, and the children were were struggling with respiratory disease and uh, flus and infections, and, and we could get them out of their illness and on their feet again, but we couldn't get rid of the runny noses and the cough. And by just adding the bears to their diet minimal, what was on the label, we were able to see a complete response. Their bodies were responding within two to three days, just on a couple bears a day. So this got my attention, and then I got... I thought, well, I called Jack and says, are there any adult supplements we can try? And I, so I tried them on uh, some of my most difficult patients and 
some of the pregnant ladies uh, who were having hormonal issues, you know, with um, like gestational diabetes is a big issue. And when you start to see uh, blood sh uh, sugar in the urine and protein in the urine, uh, I began to give them the Diasporia Velosa product with, from the Mexican Wild Yam, and we started to see that. By the next visit, we started to see a result where that completely went away. So it was like things were happening, and the midwife I was working with was watching this, and she was a hard, very skeptical, and she was a harder one to convince, harder than I was. But after about six months, I would say, after me dropping paper, you know, information, 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 and she's seeing the patients respond, uh, she she started to get involved, and we began using them on pretty much all the pregnant ladies that came into the birth center. Excellent. And Dr. Pete, let's maybe touch on for a little while the challenges uh, facing our children today. If they have greater risk with the decreased nutrition and the increased toxic load, maybe comment on some of the challenges you're seeing and what we will see as we go into the future. Well, the number one killer in children is uh, cancer. Can you imagine that? No. The, the, the number one killer of children is cancer. And I believe, according to what science shows us and what's going on in the world and where we have come you know, up to this point, with all the toxins in the air, I mean, basically the water, the food, and the air are all toxic. For example, in the United States, DDT has been outlawed here, which is a very severe pesticide, and it causes birth defects, it causes all kinds of problems. Even though it was outlawed here in the United States, it's not outlawed in Mexico. So in Mexico, they still are able to use DDT. Well, we're one world, one planet, one atmosphere. So just because it's, we don't use it here doesn't mean we don't get it. We get it through the atmosphere when the clouds come over and rain on us, you know, and they pick up the moisture from Mexico, move over to especially California, and they ra it rains on us, we get traces of DDT. So, you know, everything is contaminated, and these, these children are, and these newborns are exposed to this terrible... Uh, toxic waste dump that they're born into now. And, you know, we didn't know what to do. Our ancestors before us didn't know, you know, about toxicity. No one knew until uh, there was an awareness of it and, and there was science to back it up. On top of that, we have our science shows that, that we are deficient in at least six of our monosaccharides or glyconutrients that we should be getting from our diet and from the from the earth, where God put it on the earth to begin with for us to eat. But we don't live in the wilderness anymore. We're, we're all urbanized. We rely on farmers. We don't have orchards that we live off of. And uh, therefore, right from the get-go, moms and dads who are trying to conceive are faced with the toxins onto their eggs and sperm. And in my opinion, you don't really even get the healthiest egg and sperm that you can have for conception because of the toxins. Unless, and I have always done this, I put my couples on a program, a preconception program of nutrition and diet at least one year prior to the time, you know, to, to conception because that way we would ensure that the sperm would turn over and we'd get healthier sperm and the mom would have healthier eggs. So, the children today that are born without glyconutrients are lacking these essential nutrients, and they're, they're born with a deficit, in my opinion. So that's why I'm so focused on preconception, conception, and getting moms prior to conception on these nutrients to ensure the healthiest babies. And then we want to get moms who are breastfeeding, we want to get keep them on the nutrients so they can give it you know, add it to their breast milk, which I might add has five of the monosaccharides or glycolonutrients within the breast milk, at least five. And then we continue this process by protecting the children, supplying the missing nutrients as they're young and their cells are reproducing quickly and will ensure healthier children because the stats are today 
that our children will not live as long as we do. That's frightening. <clears throat> Something like children born in 1996 and later will be the first generation of children not to outlive their parents. That exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a shame. That's a crying shame. Absolutely. So, so you know, I, know I, I speak to, it's a passionate area for me, and as a parent myself, I believe that any parent who knew what we knew would never let their children go out the door, never let them go a minute without the protection of these nutrients. And, and I know parents, you know, love their children dearly, and I often hear parents say, you know, gee, I'll just try it on me first to see if it's safe. I'm just wondering if you could comment on the safety of these nutritional supplements for children. Working with the specialty that I do, you know, it, it has to be very clear and very sound evidence that there are no toxicities. So if you understand, I always say that if you do your homework and do your due diligence about learning about these nutrients, if that is your concern, the more you learn, the more you study, the more you'll see that these are non-toxic at any level because it's food. It's a whole different, it's a whole different category called the nutraceutical. And the nutrients are non-toxic at any level because they come from food. Even the company, in the beginning, uh, they tried to kill a rat with, with the glyconutrient complex and they couldn't do it. The rats just, uh, lived longer and looked better. I mean, they said they overdosed the rats in, in the laboratory. And that is the very reason why these nutrients, the complex didn't go to market as a drug because as a drug you have to have a um, toxic side effect. Every drug is toxic. And our FDA here in, the, in this country went to our uh, doctors and said, if you can kill a rat, come on back and we'll, we'll uh, introduce this to the world as a drug. And it couldn't be done. So we were forced to go into this new category of nutraceuticals it was the idea that uh, to take it network marketing or multi-level marketing because we in that in that form of marketing you're an educational marketer and with these nutrients you you absolutely need a little bit of uh, education to know what these are and why they're important in your diet. What if parents you know are walking along saying my children are healthy? You know what what would you have to say to them in regards to? Starting the importance of starting a preventative or protective nutritional supplement program. Everybody brushes their teeth now. You know, we all brush our teeth twice a day, and on top of that, we go get our we get our teeth cleaned. On top of brushing our teeth every day. Now, that would took many, many, many uh, decades to install this preventative thinking with dentistry in your teeth. Children. You know, like I said earlier, their cells reproduce so quickly that they're always changing. And even though they may look like they're healthy, it doesn't, I mean, we don't have a microscope looking in their bodies to see how healthy they really are. Uh, it's not until they get older, and I mean, you, I hear in the news, uh, at least here in the States, we're hearing about young high school football players and young college uh, athletes that drop dead, you know, from whatever heart attacks or whatever their issues are. But that's not normal to, to drop dead from, from I mean, we, we hear it pretty often that they, these young athletes just drop dead. And this is not normal. So that's why, you know, chiropractic is in the same same category of preventative medicine, and it's just a matter of education. If you if you are educated and you learn about these nutrients that we are deficient in them, then the absolute uh, right action would be to supply the missing nutrients. You may not see how many times have uh, you out there uh, had a friend or a friend of a friend who you had seen. I mean maybe just last week, and come to find out this week that, you know, they're uh, plagued with cancer or riddled with cancer. When they look completely normal to you and, and fine and happy and laughing and socializing and out, you know, not in bed. And just that's the thing. See, we can't predict what will happen. We don't know on the cellular level 
what's going to be happening to us. So we want to treat the cells. We want to be feeding ourselves as much as possible with these nutrients so that we can make healthy tissues and make healthy organs and we don't have to worry about it because if you get an infection or you have a severe pneumonia or you have a respiratory infection, we don't know if that or those organs the lungs have completely recovered in children. We don't they may be plagued for many, many years with residual from that one uh, damaging event of an infection. So the theory is the difference between these nutrients and say vitamins is that we're used to is that these nutrients, like I said earlier, go inside the cell and feed our cells. They attach to the cell surface and they're there to communicate with all the cells. When you have cancer and it metastasizes, meaning it spreads to another, so you have uh, lung cancer and it spreads to the brain, those cells do not belong in the brain. Those lung cells do not belong in the brain. And the very reason why they metastasize means that there's no communication. So when you take the nutrients, you're ensuring the communication levels are up and your chances of metastasizing are are possibly less because you're you're getting the cells to identify one another. For our children, it is imperative. It is, it is really one of my missions in life is to get these kids on these nutrients early just to uh, prevent a serious problem later on, whether it's diabetes, heart disease, which are the top, and cancer, which are the top uh, uh, killers, you know, I think worldwide now. So for children, it's the most important thing you can do. And a lot of parents out there say, well, I can't get my kids to do it. Well, it has to become part of life. The whole family has to do it. We all sit down and we all take our vitamins and our nutrients in the morning and we make our we make it a ritual. We all sit down and we do our thing. Everybody gets their little glass of their supplements and we sit we do it every single morning. It becomes a ritual. It's part of life. You make it part of your life. And guess what? The children will make it part of their lives. And uh, I have my business partner, Jackie, has three children who have been, you know, doing this for 11 years. They've been on the supplements. And these kids are now 21, 16, and 13, and they would not even think of leaving the house without taking their nutrients. They wouldn't even think of, of going to bed without taking their nutrients or eating their dinner without taking their nutrients. It's a done deal. They've been taught it's part of life, and science also shows that we can't get these from our diet. So you have to supplement. And Dr. Vicki, I know there's a, a significant difference between synthetic and natural, and not to say that everything natural is good for you or safe, but maybe com comment on the, the subtle difference at the, on one level, but a gigantic difference between food-based supplements concentrated that are standardized with phytochemicals and, and the plant molecules that are basically they're like space food, aren't they, really? It's not, it's not like going to take a herbal supplement or something. These are like foundational building blocks for cells. The first technology to supplement vitamins and minerals was through the, the pharmaceutical grade vitamins and minerals, where these are man-made vitamins and minerals uh, that you would take in a supplement in a pill, and that would provide your body with with the nutrients. You know, this was a theory. You, you will make them ourselves because they're missing or they're deficient, and you take them in and they'll go into your body and we'll will replace them. Well, uh, that was the first technology. Second technology was to marry foods with a small amount of the uh, pharmaceutical grade vitamins and minerals. And the minerals, of course, come from rocks. Those minerals, you know, are, you cannot digest rocks. We're not, humans are not supposed to digest rocks, plain and simple. So, but it was a better way to uh, get more bioavailability or more absorption. And the last technology, which is the one you guys have now too, the latest and the greatest, which uh, we we have the patent on, which is a hydroponic growing situation where we use the Indian mustard plant, which I might add was used all over the world in Chernobyl and toxic waste dumps. This plant was, was is a weed, and it was planted to... Uh, because of its hyper-absorbable properties. It would pull things out of the earth into the plant matrix and clean up the mess, you know, the toxic mess. Well, 
the latest technology, which we grow, grow these seeds in water, the sprouts in water. It's the Indian mustard plant, which has virtually no allergic reaction whatsoever in the body. And we grow these in water, and we put into the water all the nutrients that we want to put in there to go into the plant that we would need in, you know, in a vitamin and mineral. And then what they do is it goes into the plant, the Indian mustard absorbs it into the plant matrix, we harvest the sprouts, and we put it in a tablet, and we take it. So it's pretty much 99.9 .9 or even 100% uh, bioavailable to the body because what you're eating is a plant matrix. You're eating the plant. You're eating the vitamins and minerals that have now become part of the plant matrix. And it's like eating spinach or eating romaine lettuce or eating broccoli or something. You're just eating a plant that has these nutrients. The reason why it's preferred is because if you take in, for example, the first technology, if you are taking the vitamins and minerals that are man-made from man-made chemicals, first of all, they don't use the entire plant matrix. For example, vitamin C, most of the vitamins and minerals that are come from man-made nutrients or man-made uh, elements, you know, they take, for example, vitamin C, they take ascorbic acid, and that's, that's only part of vitamin C. There's the bioflavonoids, you have a whole matrix in the vitamin C, like the orange or the lime or uh, the Australian bush plum, which is the highest on the planet, uh, vitamin C. You want to have a whole matrix. Well, you're missing those if you take a man-made vitamin and mineral. That's the first technology. And when you do that and it goes into your body, what's happening is over time you're going to become depleted in other areas. That's why a lot of times uh, I noticed from early on in my practice I'd have to keep targeting other nutrients to my patients because all I had was, was those. Actually, I did use, we did have the food matrix, food-based one. Uh, where they married the um, handmade with the food. But still, even that, the second technology, you're not getting the whole food matrix. You're not getting, eating a plant. You're having partial man-made rocks, and you're not really getting what you need. So what happens is your body is so busy trying to find a way to absorb the rocks and things that you create other deficiencies elsewhere in the body and other different elements and vitamins and minerals, and you're chasing your body constantly with trying to provide what's missing and what you're deficient in because you're not getting the whole matrix. So this last technology, the new one that we have now that is unique to Nanotech is the one with the plant where you're just absorbing, eating plant matrix of vitamins and minerals, and you're getting 100% absorption. So your body doesn't look at this when you take it in and say, what the heck is that? What do I do with that? It doesn't have to do that now. It knows what it is because it's food. And that's really the, the best way to take your vitamins and minerals. And we've had it since November, and we're seeing incredible results. And I'm sure those of you that have tried it are seeing results, too. It gives you so much energy. It's, it's like, where, where, where did this come from? You know, is this how I'm really supposed to feel? Because it makes such a difference. Yeah, it's quite, it's, it's interesting that it's a difficult concept to communicate because when you really break it down, it's common sense, isn't it? That our food is deficient and we need to get that back into us if any of us, you know, children or adults want to maintain and protect our well-being. That's right. It's real simple. If you don't get vitamin C, what happens? You're going to get scurvy. You know, if you don't have your Bs, you're going to get very, very. There's diseases associated with deficiency vitamins. And this is a concept with the glyconutrients uh, that is, you really have to know the science because it's a concept that people are not aware of. But once they learn, once they learn about it, and educated people make educated decisions, and once you educate them on what's going on, then they scratch their heads and go, you know, I, I don't eat the sap off the trees. I don't pull the roots out of the ground and eat the roots. I don't go to the ocean and pull the seaweed out and get 
I don't eat that way. We don't follow the bears in the forest. So it makes sense that the, our farmers only give us a, a very limited amount of food and fruits and vegetables that we can eat, where when we were roaming the, the earth, we ate probably four times as much a variety of foods seasonally as 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 we could, you know, during the seasons we would eat what was there. And by doing that, you we received all our uh, nutrition, you know, from these micronutrients uh, that are comprised into the carbohydrates in the plants and the saps and the, the foods that we would eat off the earth. But today, we're urbanized. We don't we don't do that anymore, and, and it only makes sense that we're missing these nutrients. And so from what age would you recommend that children have these nutrients be included into their diet? Like I said earlier, I like to get my ladies prior to pregnancy, moms and dads, I like to get them on nutrition, on these nutrients, probably at least a year before they decide to conceive. And then, of course, we want them on the nutrients all through the pregnancy, and then following the delivery, we want moms to stay on the nutrients because now she's really going to be taxed nutritionally because now she not only does she have to uh, provide nutrition for herself, but now she's got to feed the baby. She's got to increase her calories and increase her nutritional needs. It's For me, it's like forever. It's a forever thing. So moms stay on the nutrients as they're breastfeeding, and once the babies get old enough and begin to eat food, on the average, you know, uh, we want to, once the kids begin to eat food and they're off the breast, then you start to introduce the glycogenutrients. I mean, you can do it earlier. I have so many women that just added, you know, just put it dry in the kids' mouths. I mean, you can you can start right from the beginning. It's not a bad idea because of the toxicity around the baby and uh, allowing the baby to maximize the immune system because, you know, the baby's immune system is, Virtually non-existent until probably about six months when it's fully formed. So, if you want to, you can begin to supplement the baby. If it were me, I would start probably about a month old, a month to two months old, and just start giving, you know, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon of the classic, the original. That's what I like to use. Uh, it's gummier, and I put it right in their mouth, and they just smack it between their lips, and then you chase it with the breast milk and get them to suck from the breast. And uh, so you can do that twice a day. If the baby's sick or has a severe health challenge, you can start adding the glycogenutrients to every feeding to the baby. Remember now, this is non-toxic. These nutrients are found in breast milk. And I will tell you that I have been in Children's Hospital here in L.A. Uh, numerous times where we had a baby born with a strep infection or uh, challenged with one thing or another, and usually an infection. I've gone into the emergency room with the parents who were waiting, you know, to be seen and all that, and I put the powder right into their mouth. I mean, I just dump, I bring a tub of the powder, and I just dump it in their mouth, and I have mom chase it with the breast milk. And we want to get it into the baby because that is what's going to help the baby cells communicate and the ba begin to get the baby's body to work better. You can start around two months, and then when the time comes when the baby's eating, around six months, they start getting their teeth, and uh, you want to start feeding them food around six months. Just start with the squashes, and you do one food a week, like a squash, and then you can start adding the phytochemicals, you know, and keep them on the glyconutrients and start increasing the glyconutrients. The moms have a good idea of how much to give. It's not like it's going to be toxic, and the phytochemicals are certainly not going to be a problem either. We've been giving today for 11 years now, and we haven't seen any kind of problem with giving them the phytochemical powder mixture and uh, putting them right in their food. You know, it's a good start, and then when they're around two or three, or four, you can start breaking up the uh, Dinoscoria velosa product. The plus, you can start giving them the plus, break up the, the tablet, crush it, give them half twice a day, put it in their food, put it in their juice, starting at around two or three. Science shows that we're supposed to be getting 300 milligrams 
of the phytosterols in our diet, and we're not only getting about 30, so we're very deficient in the phytosterols also. So I like to start giving the two-year-olds half twice a day, and by the time they're five, you can start doing two a day. I have a little girl that has cerebral palsy, and we're giving her, you know, she's missing these nutrients, so we're, we're giving her two of the plus a day just because we're adding it to her diet. We're deficient, so you have to give it to them. You know, this is real nutrition that is not something that you can compare to, like, a, a medication. This is something where your body begins to heal from the inside and change from the inside out on its own. And I always say what made the body heals the body. So you start to add these nutrients to the diet, and what will happen is the body begins to utilize the nutrients, and it begins to heal itself from the inside the way, in, in a priority system, the way each individual needs to be healing. So it goes for the children, too. And one of the greatest things that we have seen with the children is that, especially with the phytochemicals, is they have seems like their brains are working better. They have better brain alertness and uh, better function in their brain. We also see that they don't get, you know, it, it seems like their immune system is better. Their constitution is better. You don't see them get sick so much. And this, I will just tell you that the three things I can promise that will happen with anybody who man, woman, baby, child, or adult, Three things that I can tell you will happen is, according to Harvard's biochemistry textbook, the uh, 24th edition, the chapter on glycoproteins, chapter 56, it shows you on the first page there all the functions that rely on these nutrients to help maximize functions in the body. And one of the, one of the categories there is enzymes. And these nutrients precursor the body to your enzymes. And so one of the things that I notice that happens is with everyone across the board is that you absorb your foods better. Why? Because you make your enzymes. You're giving the nutrients you need to make enzymes. So you're going to absorb your food better. Well, if you absorb your food better, you're going to have a better immune system. Your immune system will be more optimal. You're not going to be catching that cold so quickly because your immune system will be stronger. It will work better. And number three, if those two things are working well, number three, especially in kids that are compromised or adults that are compromised with their health, is number three, you're going to feel better. And you're going to really notice it with the kids. They're going to start absorbing their food. Their immune systems will, will, will not be compromised. You'll see them be more efficient and be modulated as well and you're going to see them feel better. So the kids that are compromised, you're going to start to see them become more externalized, out, extroverted, more outgoing, more interactive. And it's, it's very subtle, but you'll see it happen. And like I said, we have to get our kids into this mindset and habit and consciousness of adding supplementation to the diet. We have to do it. We don't have a choice. It's science. It's readily available all over the med line that we are deficient in our nutrients and we're deficient in glyconutrients. We're deficient in phytosterols. We're deficient in the phytochemicals because everything's picked green. Uh, so we're, we're forced to do this. And it's really fun to see the kids grow up, like I mentioned with Jackie's kids, three kids. It's really fun to see them call, they'll call me and say, and call me Yaya, and they'll say, Yaya, do you have any, um, you know, we need some of the, we're out of the phytochemicals, or do you have any more of the amortels? We're out of it. Can you, you know, if you bring over some amortels next time you come over? And it's really fun to see these kids calling for their nutrients. They, they know they have to have it. It's just been taught to them. It's part of their education. And that's what I hope to help parents do with their children, to get it into the everyday life, part of their part of their religion every day, part of their routine every day, and part of life just to uh, make sure they get their nutrients. I know I've, I've watched my niece and nephew. My nephew at about three years old used to go and get, he called it Bambatos from his grandma and put it in his own bottle because <laughs> he thought it was well, very grown up and they just got used to it. 
Well, you know what I used to do with my patients is um, I know that children should be spoken to as though they understand what you're saying. You speak to them and, and educate them just like you would an adult. You speak to them more simply, but you speak to them on their level, eye level, speak them in a respectful, forthright manner. And I used to get talk to my patients, and my little patients, and I would say, you and I are going to work together, and we're going to recommend that mom put this, these supplements, these powders into your bottle, and I'm going to write it down here what she's supposed to do on this piece of paper. We're going to put it on the refrigerator so that mom can know and be reminded of what to put in your bottle. And I said, and we're going to help your little body try to heal itself and try to get better. And if you take your bottle and we put these in there, you know, we're, we're going to hope that these will help your body. So help your body heal itself. So I've had moms come back to me and say, do you know that I forgot to put this, the supplements in their bottle? And my little, my little, you know, two-year-old would grab my finger and take me over to the refrigerator and point to the paper. They, they point know. to the bottle. <coughs> they know. They know. It's amazing. My experience as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't endorse these, these nutrients for Western medical care. It's the care of your doctor or proven therapy. However, if parents, they're even more anguished when they have children with a health imbalance. This one, if you can comment on how important it is to include these nutrients alongside a health challenge and alongside, you know, appropriate medical care. Well, like I said, these are foods, non toxic at any level. And the best part of taking these nutrients is that when you take them with medication or you take them with chemotherapy or you take them with even even your vitamins, well, now we have the best vitamins, but whatever you take these nutrients with will make your body absorb them that much better. It will make your meds work better because your body is functioning better on the cellular level. And the good news is because they're food and they're foods that we're missing in our diet, you can take these with anything. So you just add, this is going to be classified as part of your food, a part, of, part of the foods you eat every day. This is not considered medication. So therefore, it doesn't, these nutrients do not treat, cure, or ameliorate any disease. These nutrients give your body the tools so that your body can begin to correct itself. And so if, if you have a challenge child with a, a medical issue and the, the child is on medication, great. We can, we can add these nutrients to their diet, add them to the food, and just make sure you let your pediatrician know that you're adding some, these supplements, the food supplements, and to help you, help you to manage the meds because the meds will work better. And uh, that's a good thing because Oftentimes we have to reduce the medications. Once they're on the meds and they begin the nutrients, they, we have to reduce the medications for the, the desired result. That is really a great thing. So the best scenario would be to be able to work together with, you know, your, the pediatrician. But even if your pediatrician will not work with you, you will know that this is just food and it's safe. Non-toxic. Most often the pediatricians don't have time to have access to nutritional science that comes across their desk. So I know that I've spoken to nursing sisters and, and residents in hospitals and say, I understand that you would want to have your patients having the best possible nutrition while you're treating them. And I think that uh, a pediatrician, if they had the opportunity their time to review this information, there's no way they would ever recommend against it. Oh, that, this is true. And I've dealt with ER doctors where, you know, for example, um, we've had uh, many, uh, well, not this year, but last year there were some E. coli contamination uh, where children were contracting E. coli and uh, they were in the emergency rooms. And, and I was able to send them glycobiology articles that are published on Medline just so that to educate the ER doctor, and they were very open to this, you know, to the literature because it is a published study. It is a new science and the one I like to use is 
Introduction to Glycobiology by uh, Dr. John Axford. It really covers all the bases as far as all the systems in the body, the, you know, the immune system, the all different all different aspects of why these nutrients are beneficial and are good to add to the diet. And uh, I haven't had any problems with uh, a lot of my ER doctors, any doctor that I had to approach very quickly. You give them the information and what, another good source is to give them Harvard's biochemistry. You give them that and they'll say, oh yeah, I those that have graduated after 96 will say, oh yeah, I remember studying these nutrients and, you know, they, they understand that they're uh, non-toxic and they come from foods. The other scenario is you go to your pediatrician and you just say, I'm adding these glyconutrients to my child's diet and uh, I just want you to make, want you to know and put it in the chart, and uh, if you're interested in, in uh, learning more about them, the, the food that I'm giving to my child, then you can go to Harvard Biochemistry Textbook, you know, uh, 24th edition, Chapter 56. Jackie, uh, my uh, business partner, her daughter had was in the hospital at UCLA with um, ITP, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, which was a very uh, severe autoimmune type affliction that she got from uh, repercussions from inhaling spray paint from a, a school project she was doing. She was making a moon box and she inhaled the, the chemical and uh, her platelet count, her body was attacking the platelets. So her platelets, your platelets are supposed to be in around a 200 range average. Her platelets were down to two. Wow. So they had, she was bleeding from her nose, and they had to rush her. We took her to UCLA to the oncology ward, and she, Jackie went to the oncologist and said, you know, I don't have time to give you a glycobiology lesson, but if you're interested, I'm giving her these glycodinitrants, and you'll find it in chapter, you know, in Harper's Biochemistry textbook. So what did they do? They went and got the, the, the resource, and they read about it, and they came back and they said, we read about it and we okay it, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you said, you know, doctors especially who graduate after 96 have been taught this out of Harper's. One of the books may have been, they may have learned right out of Harper's. So uh, they know about these nutrients. I only studied two because I graduated before 96, so I studied glucose and galactose, but there's six others that, they learned about since that time and were introduced in Harper's Biochemistry. So the resources are there, the education is there, and our new doctors coming out of medical school are learning this information. So they're a little more, a lot more open, I should say, to looking at these nutrients. So it's not so hard as it was 11 years ago to educate doctors about it. Excellent. And just at the end of our call, Dr. Vicki, we have one question for one of the community about the difference between autism, cancer, asthma, diabetes, so the fastest growing health challenges in children, and one of them specifically autism. The parents are just doing their best to put often on special diets, which has been shown to really help them. And some some of them use a specific carbohydrate diet, which cuts out a lot of the carbs, such right. as grains. And some identify the glyconutrients as one of those carbs. I'm just wondering if you could comment on that for them. Well, the issue with most of the children with autism is their guts. Their guts have been hurt. Either, you know, they're, uh, and believe me, you know, mothers who have delivered their children and have had epidurals, which, you know, doctors today readily push the epidurals in labor and delivery. And those, those drugs go into the fetus within 18 seconds. I mean, you know, they, 18 seconds to 18 minutes. It goes with, it goes into the baby within that time. And the, the drugs could be an issue with the gut. We're not sure. It hasn't been proven yet, but, you know, it could be responsible because drugs are toxic. And it could be part of the reason why their guts become Damage, and then now there's research to show that the preservatives and vaccines are also uh, damaging to the gut. And on top of that, if there is a oxygen deficit, you know, any kind of oxygen deficit in utero, that could also affect the gut. Because with the first, the first thing a baby does after it's born is it crawls to the breast. The first order of business for a newborn is breast milk. 
the baby wants food. And with autism, it's all about the gut. So what we want to do is we want to, number one, supply what's missing in the diet. If we supply what's missing in the diet, the glyconutrients, you're going to get cells to perform their functions. And one of the functions of the cell is to heal. So what you're going to see is their guts begin to heal. Now, these are monosaccharides. These are, these are not complex carbohydrates. And I'm very familiar with the diet you're speaking of where they go into ketosis and you can't give them uh, the carbohydrates. I had a patient that was on that diet and we added the glyconutrients and it didn't affect her, her diet at all. In fact, her, we were able to see a difference with her seizure activity for the better. And uh, it was probably due to everything she was doing. I don't say just do one thing. You have to do everything with your children that are compromised. And when you give the body the tools, it will heal itself. But my my issue throughout my whole career was the gut. My concern was baby's gut. And if we can give the body the essential nutrients, you're going to see things happen. And we have seen it over 11 years. You're going to see skull uh, the, the skull structure changes uh, occurring because they're getting the right foods. Uh, if anybody knows of Dr. Weston Price, uh, who is a dentist that traveled all over the world and uh, studied uh, third world countries, as soon as they were given the preservatives and the you know, bleached flowers and white flowers and enriched foods, you saw their skull structure change and their teeth would go crooked, they would start to get cavities, and it's all about because of the foods they were getting. They became deficient in these nutrients. So we really don't want to talk about any disease state. We just want to, we want to, everybody to know that there, these nutrients are missing. It doesn't matter if you have autism, a hangnail, hemorrhoids, diabetes, heart disease. It doesn't matter what you have. That is not the issue. The issue is we're missing these nutrients. And when you get, replace the nutrients that are missing, you're going to see the body in a priority system begin to heal itself. It's, it's what God planned for us from the beginning. And we were, we were put on this earth with all these nutrients and because of urbanization and everything else and uh, societies, you know, Western society, we are not getting them in our diets anymore. Thank you very much. That's probably a great point to finish on um, this, this afternoon your time, this morning our time. I'd like to thank you for being here. We've got one minute left and, and possibly my phone card is going to drop out any second here. So I'd like to thank you again and, and hopefully, you know, maybe later in the year we'll have you again because I know it just benefits people and gives them the courage to jump out into something that's possibly unknown to them and make a big difference for themselves, their children, and the people that they care about. And if they want more information, you can go to healthyanswersonline.com. Healthy and that's your website, and there's quite a, there's extensive information there. And, and you also do weekly um, calls where you can answer people's specific questions. Yes. And okay. it's generic. There's no, you know, it's all about glycodinutrients, phytochemicals, and uh, pediatrics, pregnancy, and preconception, conception, and kids. Excellent. Well, Dr. Vicki, thank you so much for being here.